nature. You are now a new creation. Amen. The blood of Jesus forgives us according to Ephesians 1, 7. The blood of Jesus redeems us, buys us back from the clutches of Satan. Hallelujah. We were all bound in sin and shaped in iniquity. Hallelujah. But Jesus came and redeemed us with his blood. In other words, his blood was the payment to get us out of sin. His blood was the payment to get us out of hell. His blood is the payment. Hallelujah. Still today, glory be to God. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus has spared us from God's wrath. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Hallelujah. Anybody cleansed in the house today? Amen. The blood of Jesus gives us the power to overcome. Can you say amen? amen. There is no covenant without blood. Amen. No. The Bible says in Romans 5, 8, that Christ died for us while we were yet a sinner. The songwriter says while he was on the cross, I was on his mind. In other words, Jesus hung on the cross for six hours and was thinking about charm. My God. Hey, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, God. He died on the cross. I was thinking about you, Sister Leah. He hung there and he says, this is going to be for Leah. Yes, I know she ain't born yet. Her grandparents not born. Her great, great grandparents, her great, 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 great ancestors haven't been born yet. But there's going to come a day and a time when Leah is going to call upon my name. And the blood of Jesus will be applied to her soul because she put her trust and faith in me. So I'm going to stay on this cross until the redemption story is complete. Because somebody in the most the Messiah, yet caught on the Messiah, is going to need this blood. It's it's going to need my suffering. It's going to need the wounds in my hand uh, and the wounds in my feet. Uh, somebody and one of those somebody is me. me. Thank God for the blood. The song I said for the joy. For the joy that was set before him. In other words, he saw the finish line. And at the finish line, he saw Deacon Dennis. At the finish line, he saw you, Sister Abigail. And he says, No, 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 no. I can put up with this shame. I can put up with this humiliation. I can put up with this grace. My Yanaboshe. Because one day, Sister Shelly Anna is going to get baptized. And one day, my God, uh, Sister Madeline is going to call upon my name. Uh, I, one day, Sister Shavanda is going to give her heart to God. Uh, I see joy before me. I can endure the pain. Uh, I can endure the humiliation. Uh, and hang here on this cross uh, because there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands past, uh, present, and future that is going to experience uh, the joy of my salvation. Empty tomb brought completion of God's plan of salvation. Matthew 28, verse 2 to, uh, 2 to 10. I won't read it, but uh, hopefully you'll write it down. The empty tomb tells us that the grave could not hold Jesus down. The empty tomb tells us that even though this was a borrowed tomb, it was only temporary because Jesus only needed it for three days. I want to submit to you this afternoon that whatever you're going through, Whatever tomb, whatever has tombed you in, whatever has bound you and tied you up, closed you in on every hand, it's only temporary. Amen. There is an expiration date and you're going to rise again. Are you hearing me this morning? I said you're going to rise again. Jesus checked out of the tomb, but he still made a, a reservation for the future. Because when he left his grave clothes behind, it signified that he was coming back again. Can, you get a, can I get an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. He didn't come alive and just sat there in the tomb waiting to be discovered. Hallelujah. He didn't wake up. The Bible says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. It is, Je it is God who raised Jesus from the dead. Say it with me. It is God who raised Jesus from the dead. Say it again. It is God who raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus didn't raise himself. God raised Jesus from the dead. He didn't, but when he was raised from the dead, he didn't come alive and just sit there and say, oh, let me just wait for them to roll away the stone. <laughs> let me just sit here. And wait. I wonder where the angels are. Let me know it's past time. Angels, come on now. I gotta go. Gotta go. It's Sunday morning. These ladies are coming to the tomb. The Bible says that when they got to the tomb wondering who was going to roll the stone away, that the stone was already rolled away and there sat upon the stone. The stone was, a, was an angel. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Jesus didn't come alive and sit there in the tomb waiting. But instead, hallelujah, he walked out. Now let me tell you something. Now we're going to pretend this door is the tomb door. 
So Jesus is behind the tomb. Now, just remember that I only have a flesh and blood body. All right. Okay. Jesus is behind the tomb, right? The door didn't open or the tomb door didn't roll away so Jesus could come out. Jesus walked through the stone. So you might say, he had a new body. So are you going to get one too? So you could say, oh, they rolled the stone away to let Jesus know. Oh, no, they rolled the stone away to let the disciples in. It was the disciples who needed to confirm the evidence that the body was no longer there. And it was significant because not only they could come in and say, oh, somebody carried away Jesus' body. But they knew then and there that he was risen from the dead because nobody steals a dead body and leaves grave clothes behind. That's right. Amen. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Folding. Don't make no sense. You want to steal a dead body, na a naked dead body? <laughs> Come on. Come on. But when Jesus rose from the dead, he got a new set of clothes and the robe.